After replacing the foundation walls and wall foundation, we still have to place the slab and slab edge before we can actually go to the structural framing part. So let's take a look at our plank grid joints and let's go to page S1.1. And there is a note right here specifies that we're going to use 4 inch concrete slab with this particular type of weld uh, wire fabric reinforcement on a 10 mil moisture retarder. And also if you move down a little bit, you will find out there's a 12 inch slab edge being specified here. And in order to further examine this detail, we can go to the section view, which is S4.0 detail view number one. Okay. Now, if you take a look at here, you can see some dimensions. One of the most important dimensions you want to notice is actually this one. That tells you, okay, on the perimeter of the slab and slab edge, there is a 10 inch distance between that with the grid line which is right actually here, the grid line A, okay? So when you place the slab edge, make sure you understand that the edge of the slab edge, okay, is actually 10 inches away from grid line A, all right? And also, in order to get the full dimension of the slab edge, you actually need to refer to S3.0. So let's go back one page, and uh, you will find out the typical turn down detail, which is about the thickened edge of the slab, are listed here, okay? So you'll find all the dimensions you need, a 12 inch slab, okay, age, and with a 16 inch depth, but that actually includes a four inch of the concrete slab. So the total uh, thickness is 16 inches, while your slab age is actually only 12 inches. That's 16 inch subtracts four inch. Okay, the slope of the slab age is actually one by one. That tells you the total, okay, if I draw a line right here, So this line, actually this length is supposed to be double the 12 inches. It's going to be 24 inches. So we're literally looking at a 24 inch by 12 inch slab edge. Okay. So let's go back to our uh, Revit model and I start to model the slab and a slab edge. To modeling, to model a slab edge, uh, a slab and a slab edge, we need to go to a structure tab a little quick, and now we can find the slab right uh, here on the panel of foundation. If you click on that drop down arrow, you'll find two commands available. One is a structural foundation slab, the other one is the floor and uh, slab edge. We'll start with the structural foundation slab here. As you see here, the only available type of uh, uh, foundation slab is actually six inch. But that should not intimidate you because you know how to customize a Revit family. So let's click on edit type. And rule of thumb before you do um, modifying any existing family is starting with the duplicating. Okay, so duplicate that and change the, domain, the name of the uh, family to four inch foundation slab. And don't forget to change its actual size as well. So by going click here and change the size to four inches instead of six inches. Okay, so with that being done, you just created a four inch concrete slab family and our goal is trying to place the uh, slab. So by default, you can use the pick wall tool to define the boundary of the slab. In our case, we have all those different sides with the foundation wall available. The only place that we do not have a wall is actually the front. So we will actually move our mouse on top of one of the sections of the wall, foundation wall, and you will see it will be highlighted in blue. So in this case, don't click on that wall yet. Use the tab key, which allows you to uh, select the chain of walls. So click the tab once, and you'll find out uh, all the walls now will be highlighted in blue. So then left click your mouse, and that will create the pink line for you. Those pink lines are the boundary lines, okay? So in this case, you don't really want the pink line to fall outside of the wall. You want them, you want them to fall within the uh, uh, interior side of the wall because that's where the slab actually uh, stops. So by clicking on this little flip control uh, key, you actually will be able to flip the pink line uh, all at once to the interior surface of the foundation wall. Okay. So with that being done, I'll I will still have to uh, create that pink line at the bottom, which is the front of the um, building. So in that case, remember that uh, you have a 10 inch distance between this edge of the slab here uh, with the grid line A. So in that case, we're going to create a line. Okay, we're just going to draw a pink line between those two ends. Okay, and uh, click on modify and select that pink line we just created. Okay, so a temporary dimension is going to show up and tell you now currently that distance is actually uh, 1 foot 1 eighth inch. Remember that model line we created previously to determine the starting point of the foundation wall? That's what it is for. Okay, but in our case, we want that to be 
10 inches. So you will type 0 spa uh, space and a 10 and hit enter. So that will give you the 10 inch distance you want. Okay. So with that being done, your pink lines are created. Okay. Pink lines are created. Make sure that all the pink lines are connecting with each other to form a closed loop. That means there's no intersections, no open ends, no overlappings, etc. Okay. So after that, you can click on the green check mark. And um, you will be um, prompted with the two dialog windows here. The first ask you, would you like to, would you like the walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? You will say no because you don't really want to cut the heights of the wall. Second, the floor roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the walls? You will say yes in this case because you don't really want to double count volume of materials. So click on yes. So with that being done, we can go to our 3D view real quick and take a look at the foundation slab you just created. Now the next step will be actually creating a slab edge. So let's go back to our foundation tab and click on the slab um, drop down menu and click on the slab edge. So slab edge available is actually 24 inch by 12 inch, which exactly is the type we want. Okay, but now when you place the slab edge, remember that you actually place it at the bottom of the slab. So you move your mouse. When you see the line, okay, the bottom line of the slab will be highlighted, and click there and just once, you will see the slab edge will actually be uh, would be placed underneath the slab. So now. You know, to take a look of the slab edges, uh, we want to examine its section, you know, view detail and try to see if that actually matches the plan grid detail. So in order to, uh, in order to create a section view, we have to go back to our um, floor plan. And uh, now let's go to our view tab a little quick. And this is the command that you use to create the section view. Okay. So if I draw Creating, creating a section view is really simple. You draw, uh, define one end of the section view sim, um, itself, and then you move your mouse down and uh, let the section view symbol cross where you want it to cut, and that will generate the section view you want. Okay, so we don't want to examine uh, anything else rather than just the slab edge. So you want to use this boot dash line to resize the window and to limit how much you want to see. If you drag this window over here, then the foundation, this little spray folding detail will be included in your view as well, so which you don't really want that because you only want to see the slab edge detail. Okay, so in that case, if you go to the section view by double clicking the bubble head, or you can actually use a project browser, and you'll notice there's a new category of joins views actually being created right here, section one. So it will either double click here or actually double click on the bubble head will do the same thing for you. So in this case, you see this little slab edge right here, which exactly is the one you see in plan grid. Okay, so it says exactly the same thing. All right, so you can actually measure up its um, thickness by going to annotate and click on align. And you find out that distance right here, right here. Okay, so it's exactly the size you want. Okay. Now, further examine the distance of the edge and the green line. A, you'll find out it's 10 inches. So that's how you create a foundation slab as well as the slab edge. And now we are ready to move to the structural framing part in the next video.